Hello folks, Matthew Smith here, one of the librarians at UEA. In today's database primer, we're going to be looking at Ovid Medline. If you've already watched the Ovid Embase database primer, you will probably have a fairly good idea of how to navigate Ovid. But for those who haven't, or for those who want more specific guidance on Medline, let's get straight to it. So we're going to start in our search engine. I'll use Google, but obviously you use your preferred search engine. And all we're going to do is say UEA Library Databases. So hopefully this will give us the following result. And if we click through, this is a list of all the databases we have access to. Now you can get to this through different routes. So as long as you get to this page, you're going to be absolutely fine. So where are we going to go? We want Ovid Medline. So Medline will be under M. If we scroll down, we'll find Ovid Medline. Now we do have various different versions of Medline. For today, we're going to focus on Ovid. But suffice it to say, the content in each of these should be basically the same. It's just the search interface that differs. So we'll look at Medline Ovid, click through. And the first thing it will ask us is which database we want to search. This doesn't happen with a lot of platforms. But on Ovid, even though we've just selected Medline, we then have to reaffirm our choice. I'll just zoom this in a little bit for us. There we go. So Ovid Medline, right at the bottom there. Just the one option. We tick this and we click OK. And here we are. This is the Ovid interface. Now, when I'm searching, if you've watched any of my previous videos, I always say don't stick with the basic search leap over to the advanced search. With Ovid, you've got a couple of different options for that. If you want to go for something that looks like the library catalogue, where you have multiple search boxes and the ability to kind of put all of your terms in at once, you'll go for the multi-field search. Now that's great, and if you are used to using searches like the catalogue, this is probably the easiest one to adapt to, in that you have your search boxes, you have your drop downs, ability to add more boxes if you need, everything else is fairly straightforward. However, in Ovid, I would normally use the advanced search, which is just a little bit different. The advanced search here is going to allow us to key in terms individually, and we're then going to combine them together from our search history. So let's take an example and look at how this would work. Let's say we were interested in research that looked at COVID-19 and asthma. So in, in any context, let's say that's what we were interested in. So what we'll do is start by typing in just our first term, COVID-19. And what you'll notice is that there are no drop down menus here to determine how deeply we search the papers. So if you want to control which fields are searched, Rather than use the drop down, you actually do this through the search bar itself. And you put a full stop, and then you put the initials for any fields you want to search. So let's say I want to find COVID 19 in either the title or the abstract of papers. I put TI for title, and then I'll put a comma, AB for abstract. So that'll be any papers that have the term COVID 19 in either their title or abstract. Now you might say, how do I know what all these initials are? So TI and AB are probably two that you're likely to use. The other one will be the generic search, which is .mp, and which covers a variety of key fields. But if you want to go further than that, and there are lots of options, so you might well do, have a look at the help guide within Ovid, because that will list out all of the different fields that you can search, and you'll be able to put in as many as you want in a search line. But for now, we're going to go title abstract, so I'm going to hit search. And what that will do is it will bring up the results for me. But more importantly, it will also put that line into my search history. So if I expand this out, you'll see I've now got COVID-19 in here. So what I can do from that point is I can then say, right, and my second idea was asthma. Now, obviously, if I were doing this for real, I'd put lots of alternative terms for COVID-19. But here, we'll just take immediately asthma, and this time I'm going to actually just leave it so I can show you what it will do if you don't put any fields in. So we'll say asthma, we'll hit search, and that will generate another line in our search history. And you'll see here that it's been 
uh, that dot mp has been appended to asthma and that has then covered all the fields which are highlighted here so you might decide you don't want all of those in which case you do need to specify but if you don't those are the fields that are searched now having put both of those terms in what i can now do is i can combine them together so in a multi-field search where we have multiple boxes what we will normally have is the and between the boxes so i would have put covid19 in my top box and then asthma in my second box to say any papers that have the term covid19 and also had asthma in the, the fields i'd selected here we obviously haven't built in that and yet so what we do is we tick each line that we want to and and we click the button down here and the same principle would work for us if we put in alternative terms for either of these ideas that generates an extra line for us so we've now got line three which is one and two i.e papers that meet both of these two criteria we can see there's 854 which if i scroll down the page i'll be able to look through so let's talk about looking through these so results on ovid medline wherever we've got a result we want to look at so let's just pick one out here at well not quite random because i'm having a quick scan uh, that looks like a reasonable option so let's click on this one if we click on the title we get the full record which might give us a little more information the important thing that you'll want to do in most cases is see the full text so if you've looked at the abstract which will be down here somewhere crikey this is a big paper there we are, there's the abstract. Lots and lots of authors and affiliations there. So if you want to see the full text, you will find on the right hand side an option to check UEA access. So I don't know if this one is one we will have access to, but let's have a quick look. Okay, so sometimes you'll be pushed through directly, sometimes you'll be prompted to open a new browser window with the results in. So let's have a quick look and see what we've got here. Okay, perfect. So you see this has pushed me through to a different platform, the Wiley platform, and we have got access to this article so we can read it either in full, or no, apparently not, just the abstract there. Okay, but the PDF should give it to us in full. Let's have a quick look, just make sure that's right. Okay, there we go. So this is this is the full paper. Oh, it's a long one. Okay, anyway, we won't scroll through all of that. So, check UA access, that's where we're going to get our full text from. You will also see on the main, main set of results where you've got the option, you can go straight to check UEA access. So there we are, we have those. You may occasionally notice that items don't have that. So for example here, this is just a letter. So I believe if we open this up, what we'll actually find is that, oh no, maybe not in this case, okay. Quite often when they don't have a link, it's because there just isn't going to be a full text available. And that's normally because it's actually just an abstract length thing that you can look at within the record. Not sure about this one, but we won't let it distract us. Now, in terms of saving content from within Ovid, it's very possible that you might want to save either your search or some of your search records to come back to at a later date. So the way we do that, let's start with the search is we will first need to sign ourselves in. So there's an account option up the top. Although it says log off, I'm not currently logged in. That will always just be there because it's recognized you as someone from UEA. If I click my account, I'll be asked to log in. Now this is not your UEA login. You do not need to use your UEA details. What you will have to do the first time you come into Ovid is create an account for yourself. And this is just like signing up for anything online. So there's no limitations on what you use. You don't need to use your UEA email, whatever suits you. For me, I've already created an account, so I will just sign myself in. There we go. Okay, so that's me signed in. And if I now come back to my search, what I can do, if I want to save my search for a later date, I can pick individual lines or I can select everything and I can hit save. What that will then prompt me to do is just give the search a name. Now, I tend to say, try to give it something meaningful. So if I call it COVID asthma, and I would also, uh, what day are we today, 12th of August, normally give it the date. 
just so that it's easy for me to differentiate. You could alternatively do kind of versions. So this would be version one, then I might have version two, version four. As long as you've got some way of tracking when you've made updates, it makes life much easier if you need to come back to. And to help with that, you can add a comment. The only other thing we need to do here is look at the type. We're going to want to save it permanently. We won't talk about the other options here at this point, but it should default to permanent, and that's what we want. So we click Save, and that is our search saved. Now, if I ever want to bring this back up, what I can do is when I come into Ovid, I can look at a search history and there's a view saved option up here on the top right. Click on that and I will see all of the different searches that I've saved at different points. And to bring one back, all I would need to do is tick the box and then scroll to either top or bottom and hit run. There are other options, view, edit, things like that, but we don't need to worry about those for today. So hit run and it will rerun. I won't do it because we've already got it in here. The other thing we might want to do is save some of the records. So if we find papers which we thought were really helpful, so let's say, oh, I've lost track of which one we were looking at, but anyway, let's say this one, I'm not sure if it was or wasn't. If we were to look at it and think, yes, I'd like to come back to this, but I don't necessarily want to download the PDF and keep it with me. I'd like to have it stored on here so that I can come back to it at any point. You will find there is a plus my projects at the bottom here. Equally, if I were to open up the full record, that plus my projects is also in the menu bar there. Click on this and you will be prompted to either add it to an existing project, and I'd created one called test, or to create a new project for it specifically. So this is really helpful because it allows you to file papers by particular assignments. So I'll call this COVID-19 asthma. Won't put a project description, but we'll add the item and then that will be stored for us. So if we wanted to retrieve that, we can come back at any time. We can go to My Projects, which is at the top of the page here. And you'll see there that we've got a folder that I've just created, COVID-19 Asthma. Click on that and you'll find the article we've saved. So it's a nice way of storing records. Okay, so those are the main things you're gonna to want to know how to do on Ovid Medline. I'm gonna talk finally about using mesh terms but for some of you, that may not be something you need. So for, <laughs> for those of you uh, that that's the case, feel free to log off at this stage. But for those of you who are interested, let's talk mesh terms. Now, when we're running a search, what we've done so far is what we'd call free text searching or keyword searching. This is how searching works in Google or any other search engine that we're likely to have encountered. In that, we take a particular term and we say, does it appear in this paper's record? Or does it appear in this web page if we're on Google, for example? Now that's great, but it is a little bit limited because the search engine doesn't actually understand what that term means. All it's looking at is does that word or that phrase appear in a paper or a paper's record? So we might have a paper that says, unlike COVID-19, breaking your leg, da 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 da, da. I don't know we would know as someone reading that sentence that really the focus is on the second clause is on the broken leg and they're just using COVID-19 as a slightly daft comparator in that case. But to the search engine, it doesn't know. It thinks, oh, the term COVID-19 is in there. Let's bring that paper back for us. And exactly the same for asthma, I should say. Now, one tool that we have available to us to try and improve the quality of our search on that basis are what are called index terms or subject headings. So within Medline, there's a subject heading set called MESH, MESH terms or medical subject headings um, in long form. These are essentially a set of terms that have been agreed to be used for certain concepts within health and medicine. And papers, when they come into the database, will be tagged with these terms to identify the contents of the paper. So for example, if we put a paper in about asthma, when it got to the database, either the author of the paper would have looked at it or the curators at the database will look at it and they will say, this paper is about asthma, not just has the term asthma in, it's about asthma. We will tag it with the mesh term for this concept. And what that then means is us coming later to run searches can look for any papers that have been tagged 
with asthma. So not just those that have the term asthma in, but those that have been tagged as being related to asthma. So we're kind of leveraging a human intelligence there. It would be lovely if we could look at every paper in the world. We can't do that. But what we can do is we can say, look, has someone looked at this paper and identified it as being related to asthma? Yes, then I would like to look at it. So how do we achieve that? I'm going to go with asthma because COVID-19 is a newer concept and often with subject headings they're a little slow moving, although with COVID-19 I'm pretty certain they've already indexed it. So all we would do is we would put the term that we're interested in into our search box here, but rather than run search we will click map term to subject heading. And if I click search now, rather than adding it to my search, what it does is pulls me through to a page where I can see the different subject headings available to me. So I can see that there is a term for asthma. I can also see there are different forms of asthma that are highlighted. And what I can do if I click on the term itself, asthma, is I can see which terms are associated. So it's worth knowing that MeSH terms, and this will be the same for other indexes, other subject heading sets, sit within a hierarchy. So the terms don't just exist in isolation. For example, here we've got asthma, which sits under bronchial diseases. And then underneath asthma, there are more specific terms. And when a paper comes into a database, it will be tagged with the most specific term available. So for example, if there's a paper about aspirin induced asthma, it will be tagged with that term, but not with the broader asthma term. Now, in my example, I was just looking at asthma generally. So what I can do is I can select that main line and it might be that I want to select all of these options below. If that is the case, I don't need to manually select everything. In this case, there's only five, so it won't take too long. But you can imagine if you're slightly higher up and you've got lots of things that are going to get uh, lots of expanders, because you'll see the expanders here, that could take a few, a few minutes. What you can do is you can use the explode function, which we have in the column here. So if I tick explode, what that means is I get any papers tagged with the term asthma or any of the terms that sit underneath it. So you'll see that there's an indent essentially which says all of these underneath and then when we get to the next term that's the equivalent level of asthma so by having explode tagged I wouldn't be getting any of this it would just be these five terms here plus the main asthma term. The other option we have is focus sometimes called major subject heading but um, in in Ovid, we are calling it focus. That essentially means we only want to see papers that have come in and which have been tagged with this term as a major concept. So papers will often have mesh terms tagged either as major concept or minor concepts within them. Now I have to say in most cases if I'm using mesh terms I'm probably putting quite a sophisticated search together where I really I'm more focused on having a nice sensitive search that won't miss things in which case I tend just to ignore this but just so you know that's an option there. So we'll leave it at asthma, we'll leave that exploded, and we will click continue. What that normally then gives you is a set of subject, uh, subheadings. It doesn't always, sometimes they aren't available for certain terms, but normally you will. And you can select the particular aspects you're interested in if you want to, or, which I normally do, just click continue and it will just have anything, any subheadings or none at all. So if we go continue, we get the broadest picture possible. And what you'll see is that we've generated 132,000 results, less than when we just looked for asthma in any of the key fields. So we've been more specific, and then we can have a look through and see what's in here. And what you'll find is every single paper, if you open it up, there is a mesh subject headings field. So for all of these, you will find the term asthma in that set of terms, or one of the more specific underneath that we'd clicked explode to try and pull in. You'll also see from this example that there are lots of more uh, general terms that might be used, so male, female, humans. You have lots of options with MeSH, so don't feel it's just for diseases or conditions. You can try almost any term to see if there's an option in there. If there's not, nothing you can do about it, but it's always worth looking at. And what I might choose to do is, rather than just look for term, uh, papers rather that are tagged with asthma as a term, I might say, let's combine that with my existing asthma line so we tick each we say or and we say any papers let's expand that any papers that either have the word asthma in one of these fields or which have been tagged with the term asthma which gives me slightly more to play with 
realistically at that point I would probably limit down this line and say actually asthma in the title or abstract is fine or that has been tagged with asthma but that's a different point. So in terms of MASH that's all you really need to know on Ovid. With that and with any of the other searching I have a whole series of guides available and if you do want to come across any of those, sorry not if you want to come across, if you want to look at any of those I would encourage you to google UEA libguides and this should pull up a result that looks like this. Go into here and you'll find there's a guide for all the different subject areas. So if you're a student in one of my areas, which would be health, medicine or social work, you can find one of your, uh, one of your terms. So we've got health, we've got medicine, there'll be one for each different subject basically. And if you go for health as an example, you will find a link to our Blackboard space. If I click through there, you should already be enrolled, but just in case, check to see if there's an enrol option on the left hand side. If there is, you need to click that. There's all sorts of guides in here. So if you just want a little more in depth about searching, we've got guides here to look at and things like mesh that have gone over in a bit more detail. Hopefully this has been a good introduction to Ovid, a little bit longer than a lot of the ones that I've set up so far. And that's simply because Ovid is a slightly more complex platform, I think. I hope though it's given you a good start. Of course, if you get stuck, do refer to the Blackboard space or drop me a line. I'm always happy to answer questions. Okay, see you next time.